live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the pods, moving, and storage studios. It's the Ramsey Show, where we help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create actual amazing relationships. Ken Coleman, Ramsey personality, number one best-selling author of the book Paycheck to Purpose, host of the Ken Coleman Show, is my co-host today. As we answer your questions about your careers and work and money, and Ken's show is all about your work and your career, and uh, we'll both jump in on whatever you want to talk about. The phone number is 888-825-5225. That's 888-825-5225. Green Bay, Wisconsin. Craig starts this hour. Hi, Craig. How are you? Doing great. How are you? Better than I deserve. What's up? Uh, just quick question, uh, bottom line up front. Am I being a stick in the mud and not wanting to spend <clears throat> money? So some details. Uh, 38, married with six kids, uh, $200,000 household income. Our house is worth probably 900 We owe 475 and have no debt outside of the mortgage. My wife has a 2015 van with about fifteen or with about ninety thousand miles on it, and it's worth about fifteen uh, if we were to sell it or trade it in. Um, I'm fortunate that I have a, a company provided truck, uh, so I have no no vehicle expense there. Uh, we're in the process of selling a paid off rental where we're going to be keeping about one hundred and twenty thousand dollars. I want to take all of that and throw that all off at our mortgage, and my wife wants to upgrade her van to maybe a forty-five or fifty thousand dollar suburban, and and use you know thirty to thirty to forty thousand of our uh, rental, you know our 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 income coming back on the on the selling the rental house, and I guess I'm I'm struggling with the whole reverse engineering because I wouldn't take off or I wouldn't take a loan more on the mortgage to pay the, you know, to, to go toward a car. But I guess I'm, am I, am I stick in the mud for thinking what I'm thinking? I don't think stick in the mud is the right analogy, although she may have called you that. (laughs) No, that's me being critical of myself. (laughs) (laughs) Thus the phone call. (laughs) Oh, well, no, I think you're just, uh, You know, you are the nerd. You are like I am at my house. You're the numbers cruncher. And uh, and you're also happen to be the saver. And she's more of the free spirit and more of the spender. And neither one are right or wrong. Uh, You just and you need each other. Larry Burkett used to say if two people just to like get married, one of you is unnecessary. So um, you need opposites generally attract. And that's a good thing. So we balance each other out. Uh, My wife is the natural saver at our house and I'm the natural spender at our house. I'm, I'm in charge of fun and uh, she's in charge of killing it. No, I'm kidding. But the <laughs> careful. Dave. So uh, careful. Yeah. This could get back to her. She might actually listen yeah. to the show one day. Who That's knows? Right. But, um, so yeah, no, you're not being a stick in the mud. You are being yourself and she's being herself. And there's really not a wrong answer here. Here's what I'm thinking. When I heard your whole story, this bu- purchase of this van this upgrade of this van, she spends a lot of time with six kids while you're out there earning all this income. And so this is a quality of life thing for her. This is not a frivolous expenditure in her mind. The other thing I'm thinking is that this is not a pattern that this lady consistently wants to buy crap and you guys don't make advances on your wealth building plan. That's not really who she is. This is a fairly rare request for her. I know that because your numbers tell me that, because you don't have a bunch of other mess that she has made. So she's not a an overspender. She's not like a congressman, you know? I mean, right? She, yeah, it's, this is, this is the, the biggest... She, biggest one with with multiple zeros she's reasonably but, you know, we, reasonably frugal like, for a spender yes yeah there's no she's not immature yeah. she's not a princess she's not always wanting something new i know that because your numbers the fact that you're debt free with six kids making two hundred thousand, you've got almost a million dollar or better than a million dollar net worth tells me that she's not okay because she, she would have destroyed that 
were she the, or the pattern there. So this is this is not a pattern. It, it, given the life situation, um, I'm going to go with her on this. Yeah. And Craig, let me. Right. Can I challenge your mindset, Craig, in a positive way? Okay, I'm not getting on you. I want to just give you a different thought process. You're winning. Yes, you're winning financially. For real. And this rental house is another giant win on top of all of the winning you've done to this point. Celebrate the win by getting a really nice car that your wife really wants. And understand that you're not losing in any way, shape, or form by spending uh, reasonably on a really nice suburban for your wife. And I just think you have to shift your mindset here. You're still winning, and you need to celebrate this big win by being able to bless your wife and your six kids. I think you reframe that, and I think you'll sleep a little bit better. But you've been so intense, and we're proud of you. And it's what got you to this point. But we've got to learn. You know, I, I don't work out very much. I know can, people can tell that when they see me. But I've got some friends that work out like crazy, Dave, and they tell me, I I got to have a cheat day. I got to have an off day if I'm going, going all the time. And I think it's the same thing in this gazelle intensity. You've earned this. She's no, they're earned not even it. a gazelle intensity stage, though. They're, they're really, they're but they have been for so long. intentional stage. That's right. Yeah. 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 So, um, yeah, you, you drive like no one else so that later you can drive like <laughs> no one right. else. That's right. I you, love that. You live like no one else so that later you can live and give like no one else. These are no discipline seems pleasant at the time, but it yields a harvest of righteousness. And that's where you are. You have yielded mm -hmm. a harvest mm -hmm. and you've done a really, 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 really good job. A, B, this is not a pattern on her part. This is a singular situation. Uh, and if you hadn't done a good job or this was a pattern, I probably would have sided with you. Like if you had a bunch of other debt laying around or something. And you want to do this instead of paying off some student loan debt or something. I mean, nope, nope, nope. Get rid of the student. You know, but that you guys have done been so superb. And um, and this lady, I can just tell by the numbers, she is not an unreasonable person. She's you, you, you married. You married up. Mm -hmm. Well done. Yeah. Well done. Yep. Good stuff. Open phones at 888 The first time I was blessed, I'll name drop to get to meet the great Zig Ziglar. Mm. Sharon and I had lunch with him and Gene at this little Italian restaurant. And about halfway through the lunch, Zig says, Dave, you know, I don't really respect a man that won't marry up. And I got to tell you, I deeply respect you. <laughs> <laughs> Only Zig could say it like that. I think that's a compliment somewhere in there. I think, yeah. I think that was good. Yeah, <laughs> That's great. <laughs> this is The Ramsey Show. We've been doing business at Ramsey for more than 30 years. By now, we're a well-oiled machine, but it wasn't always that way. Yes, we've always had a vision, always had determination, and a drive to help people, but what we didn't have was one central place to access all our numbers so that we could get further ahead or quickly see when we needed to pivot. We were always jumping back and forth between different systems and spreadsheets. So when NetSuite by Oracle helped us wrangle our revenue, inventory, expenses, and more into one place, it was a game changer. And NetSuite's number one cloud financial system can help your business gain the same visibility because businesses thrive on timely data. And NetSuite's real-time analytics can help your business have immediate access to your numbers daily so you always know where you stand and you can move quickly. So go to netsuite.com slash Ramsey today and set up a free product tour. That's netsuite.com slash Ramsey.
Ken Coleman Ramsey personality is my co-host today. Thank you for joining us. We're so glad you're here. If you're listening to the show and you're trying to piece together what we teach on our own, you can do that. It's called common sense. You could have done it before you came to us. Live on less than you make. Chop up your stupid credit cards. Nobody ever got rich on credit cards except the credit card companies. So this is really not rocket science. And there's like... I think we have had, uh, they said the other day, something like 4 billion minutes of YouTube viewed of this show now. It's bizarre. It's like 1,100 years worth of YouTube has been now wow. viewed uh, of this show uh, and me and you and everything else. Uh, you know, And so the YouTube channel is massive. And if you want to wander through all that stuff and try to figure out what we do, you can do that. But that's... Not the most efficient way. No. The best way to do it is just take the class. You'll just be the, the nine lessons in just a few weeks. And the average person who takes Financial Peace University is debt free in less than two years, everything but their house. House is paid off an average of seven years. It's a proven system. Ten million people have been through it. Now, again, you, you could do it with a total money makeover book for ten dollars at Ramsey Solutions right now. But that's harder. This is the easiest way to get the whole thing going, and it's the most efficient way for your dollar, for bang for your buck. So we're pouring jet fuel on the whole thing right now. The Ramsey personalities, Ken Coleman included, uh, Dr. John Deloney included, Rachel and Jade's classes are already going, but they're leading Financial Peace University classes. They're the coordinators of some of the classes online. If you want to be in a personality coordinated FPU class, you can still do that for Ken or a Deloney or George Camel, uh, Jade Washaw, Rachel Cruz's classes are closed. Uh, they're like four lessons in already. Uh, you, you waited around too long on those. But you can get in on these and don't, don't have FOMO. Go to uh, financialfpu.com or ramseysolutions.com and click on FPU, either one. Thank you for joining us. Mason is in Idaho. Hi, Mason. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. How's it going? Better than I deserve. What's up? Good. So I'm... Um 16 years old, and me and my brother do landscaping. He's owner, then I'm his uh, lawn care manager. I'm going to bring in probably about $45,000 this year and closer to 100 next year. Wow. I just want to Good advice Lord. to put that money as I'm still living at home and don't have a ton of expenses. And pay off your parents' house. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> wow. What are you doing again? Uh, we, we do lawn care and landscaping. Uh, we do a lot of work. We have a really fancy golf course, and we do a lot of property down there. So Wow. And you said your brother's your boss, and you're the lawn care manager. How old's your brother? He's well, 19. 19. Man. Yep. I don't want to hear anybody griping about young people. I mean, and I don't this want to hear anybody gumption. griping that you can't find something to do to work That's out there. That's a fact. Oh, my gosh. He's projecting a hundred grand next year. Why not? <laughs> Why not? That's a good story. Way to go, young man. Mason, now you're amazing. Congratulations. Wow. So your question is what to Thank do you. with the money? Yeah, I just was like investment. And what I mean, I'm definitely, we're definitely going to move out at some point. So save for a house and all that. But you going to, you plan to go to college? No, sir. Yeah, that a boy. <laughs> What's wrong with college? Nothing, Dave. It's not bad. It's not bad, but makes, he makes smart people smarter if they take the right stuff. If they need it, okay, he doesn't so what need you, it. What, what are you going to do with your life, Mason? Uh, definitely do this for the next couple of years. Become keep the manager going. Definitely get up there. We'll see where this business goes. It's definitely growing. We have four trucks, and we're having to buy a truck about every other month. It seems like, but um, and then I don't know. I'm kind of thinking about maybe going into crane work. Uh, we have some cool classes over here for that. So, Okay, so the reason I'm asking all that is not to be facetious. It's to say um, the first and best investment someone in your age group can make, 16 to 26, is in uh, knowledge. That may or may not be a four-year degree. That may or may not be a, a formal series of classes, but knowledge. And the thing you do need to do is be a continual learner mm -hmm. the rest of your life. So you're always going to conferences, reading books, taking the occasional class or whatever. And, uh, and or in your case, maybe you are pursuing a certain certification in crane operation or yeah. whatever that is. But I, that's the best use of this money because it's going to give you the best rate of return. Knowledge has the best rate of return of any possible investment. Knowledge that actually has utilitarian use in the marketplace. Okay. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. So yeah, getting yeah, tool, like getting tooled up 
you're getting your brain to and your hands tooled up to go do the next thing is always the best money maker. So that's where I want you to do with money first. Secondly, yeah, you can begin investing. And if you're if you don't need to set aside a bunch of money for a four year because you're not going that route, then um, then you can start to think about Roth IRAs, file a tax return, do a Roth IRA, get with a smart investor pro, they'll help you do that. And you can get a real head start on that. Uh, but if you told me you were going to four year and you needed this money for that, I'd be okay with you just setting it aside for that. Either any of those are fine, any of those directions. Wow. Yeah, really impressive. And see, this is this is this is going to be an entrepreneur. Uh, no, he, he already he, is. Whether he takes the crane classes or not, I'm telling you, this young man is going to be creating jobs from a company that he has started, and this is the entrepreneurial path. And, and and I just couldn't be any more excited to hear a story like this. And this is and I want to be very clear. And Dave's having fun with me, but uh, I'm not anti college. I'm anti assuming that you have to go to college to be successful and spend four years time and money on a degree that you don't even want and may not even be able to use. That's my position. This young man is an exhibit A of he doesn't need the four-year degree. What he does need is, as Dave pointed out beautifully, continuing knowledge, continue to grow, and education is not exclusive to a diploma at a fancy university. Education is, like Dave said, reading books, uh, listening to podcasts, going to conferences, sitting with successful business women, women and businessmen who are winning in the field you want to be in. And so uh, what a great story. 19 and 16-year-old brothers, Dave. Yeah. so Crushing it. I had the exact same situation just the other day. I got some work being done on one of our properties. Yeah. And two of these big track hoes come up, major, yeah. major cranes, yeah. gra grabbing rocks, grabbing stuff, right? Talking to the guy running it. And um, he's like 30 years old, and he owns the thing. He goes, I started listening to you. No, no he's, he's 40 years old. I'm sorry. He said, I started listening to you when uh, 20 years ago Wow. on talk radio. And he goes, I was, I was running a uh, – I, I was cutting grass. Mm -hmm. I was running a lawn care. And I expanded into irrigation, and we expanded into tree removal, and I bought a couple pieces of heavy equipment, and he said, now I own $2 million worth of heavy equipment, and I run a heavy equipment operation. Wow. 100% debt-free the entire time. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, high school graduate. Yeah. And yeah. he just kept working, did good work, opportunities presented himself, he learned it, acquired it. Did it, expanded it, and I wonder how many people he employs. A uh, bunch. <laughs> you bunch. see, I mean, you got several million dollars worth of equipment. It doesn't sit idle. That's correct. You know, so, so he's uh, creating jobs. Yeah, yeah. That, this is how this is how America works, boys and girls. <laughs> Just a little lesson for your economics class. <laughs> That's true. That's Karl true. Marx was not there. <laughs> this is the Ramsey Show. Open phones at triple eight eight two five five. Two two five. Our friend Mike Rowe would be real proud. Of I was just getting ready that to kind say of thing. That. Uh, we were talking about this in the uh, America's Labor Crisis event we did a few weeks ago uh, that you were a part of, and we were talking. And Mike and I were talking about it on stage that the he's not he's about as hardcore pro tradesman as anybody oh, yeah. you'll ever meet. That's right. And almost anti college, but not completely anti college. Right. But you know what we all agree on, regardless of how where on that spectrum you land, right. is uh, a a useless college degree is useless and too expensive. That's right. Uh, and so, getting a degree in German polka history, you're going to end up being a barista. Okay, this is just dumb. All right, and you're going to pay two hundred fifty thousand dollars for the opportunity to mm. draw somebody else's coffee. And so, um, nothing wrong with being a barista, but if that wasn't your goal, and that's where you end up by default, that's what I'm making fun of. So don't you barista, the, don't let the barista union start sending me hate mail, okay? <laughs> but the, uh, but he, he, our point was that the currency all along has been knowledge. Yes. And somewhere the switch got flipped, and it, the currency became a college degree. Yes. And it's not a college degree. No. The currency that moves you into the next thing. The thing you spend to go into the next section of your life is knowledge. A college degree can represent that, but it is not the currency. That's right. This is The Ramsey Show.
Hey folks, you know that sinking feeling when you make an offer on a house you love and then you hear there's another offer? You need the Churchill Mortgage Home Buyer Edge. Super fast pre-approval and a secured interest rate. Plus a $5,000 seller guarantee gives your offer the best chance of being accepted. The Home Buyer Edge from Churchill gives you an advantage over those other guys. Go to churchillmortgage.com today to learn more. Ken Coleman, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. Thank you for joining us, America. This is The Ramsey Show. Tracy is with us in Orange County, California. Hi, Tracy. Welcome to The Ramsey Show. Thanks. Well, you guys are not going to be as proud of me as you were the first two callers. (laughs) Okay. Sorry to bring it down. Oh, well, there's Tracy and then there's Tracy. Okay. (laughs) <laughs> uh, okay, so I've got a, bo- a bonus coming next month, about $13,000. Way to I'm go. About 19, well, here's where it goes down. I've, I'm about $19,000 in credit card debt with 17 cards open, and I pay about $754 a month on those cards. Mm-hmm. Now, yes, my husband is not happy with me at all, so mm-hmm. you know, he's the saver. My question is, do I pay off as many of the lowest cards as possible and 30% on the bigger ones? I'm trying to figure out what I should do with my bonus money to get rid of as much of this debt as possible. Okay. Um, let's answer that, but let's kind of circle around it for a second before we okay. do, okay? Because okay. It, because it does affect uh, the importance of the answer. Now, it won't change the answer, but um, are you done? Yes. You're done. You you cut them all up. I'm done. Yes. You hesitated. They are cu- they are all cut up. Every one of them. No, well, I had to think about it for a second, but okay. I'm looking at them right now in the trash. My husband and I have had many heated discussions about it, and oh, I don't want to waste money about the, this. Has become a this has become a thing. Them. Okay. It has become a very serious thing. Okay. And uh, are you two now going to move from? Uh, him having serious discussions at his wife's credit card debt to now working together and handling money together and never going back here again. Correct. Because as he says on paper, we do really well, but I have a spending problem. So I don't want it to affect our marriage as it is. And I'm done. Well, I, I, I want you to be able to continue to enjoy money as a, as a vote on the budget that you do together but that will also ensure some accountability that you're asking for and willing to do for not overspending. But I still want you to be able to spend. We don't want to go all the way to his side and you have no oil at all on the joints and start to squeak. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So enjoyment of money is part of the process as well. It's not, uh, but, but overdoing it obviously is not the process. So having said all that, that's important because, um, if you're not doing the things that we've been talking about for the last few moments, n- no answer to your 13000 is going to work because the crap's going to grow back. Exactly. Okay. So that, that's why I wanted to set the table there for that. So having said all of that, then, let's just list them smallest to largest, regardless of the interest rate balance, smallest to largest balance, and pay off as many as 13 will do. You said there's 17 cards. I'll bet you that gets rid of uh, 14 of them. Well, I've got eight that are under one thousand dollars, okay. and I've got nine that are over a one thousand dollar balance. Okay, so we know we got eight of them. That's eight thousand, and then there's another five thousand. So I'm going to be pretty close. Might be thirteen instead of fourteen, but depending on what how those balances land. But the good news is, and I tell you, I, I have sat with people, Tracy, in the past, like years ago when I first started doing this, and I was amazed at what it does to your emotions, like when. 
we would make a list of all of their debts, smallest to largest, and then we would look over and say, hey, you have $11,000 in a savings account. And they would have, these people maybe in, the, in those situations have a little $75 medical bill from diagnostic. Because if you drive near a hospital, they send you a $75 diagnostic bill. <laughs> They, you don't even have to go in. You just drive past. They send you a bill. It's like automatic. It's like a camera on the car. And so, you know, you get all these little mosquito bills. I call them little tiny ones. And we make a bit. There'd be a list of 30 or 40 things when people first start this that have been just hanging around because they were disorganized and chaotic. And we would take $10,000 and wipe out like three quarters of the list. And it feels like you did more than you actually did mathematically. You see what I'm saying? Yes. And when you knock out uh, 13, 14 of these things, you're going to you're going to get that sense of emotional momentum. Yeah. And Tracy, I'm going to challenge you. I mean, first of all, every penny. So let me make sure you, you hear us every penny of the 13. So that's going to leave you with six thousand dollars left. And I would keep the momentum going because I think you're going to get a real uh, shot of dopamine when you strike a check and you cut it down to six grand. But then I would be doing selling things. I would be looking for extra opportunity to make some money and, and put it on paper just as you list out all of the Knock debts, out the rest of it real fast. How quickly can I knock out the six thousand? And if I think if you do that before we cut the check for 13 so it all happens one two punch i think you're going to be surprised how quick you knock out the six it's going to change your marriage it's going to change all this emotion that's been around these heated conversations yeah congratulations yeah and we're, we're thankful to have you in the listening audience and proud of you as you, you say um, day she's sick and tired of being, being sick, sick and, and tired. tired yeah that, that's when when you finally say i've had it yeah that's when you're ready to change until you're ready, until you had your I've had it moment. And she has. Yeah, you can tell. Yes. And no one can have it for you. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? Your husband can't have it for you. <laughs> That's right. You, you know, it's I, true. I, you know, I now value my marriage and the quality of my marriage, not just my marriage, but the yeah. quality of my marriage above the, the spending pattern. Yep. I've had it. Yeah. And and that's a that's a that's an adult decision right there. It's not a baby. So she said we weren't going to be as proud of her as the other two. I'm proud of her. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Uh, I think I, you're doing really good. I absolutely agree because you know in some ways, the 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 constitution that it takes emotionally, mentally, you're going to have to really go after this, change the way you live and think. Uh, that's to be admired, Tracy. Yep. It's to be admired. That's uh, Change isn't easy. Transformation is one of the hardest <laughs> things humans do. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, it's interesting. You're talking about the, this idea that um, go ahead and lay out the plan for the other 6,000. That's very – so there's two things here yeah. you guys need to listen and hear very clearly if you're fighting debt. Number one, when you pay off smallest to largest, you get a positive feedback loop, mm -hmm. okay? This is telling you you're winning, you're winning, you're winning, you're winning, you're winning. There's a light at the end of the tunnel that's not an oncoming train. And so you will keep with something that gives you a positive feedback loop. That's a psychological phrase. Go look it up, okay? So – if you if you're getting if you're getting some wins if you go on a diet and you lose weight you'll keep doing it if you go on a diet and you gain two pounds you quit negative feedback loop positive feedback loop okay so the, you need things that the second thing that happens is and we do it here on the air with people and they don't even realize we're doing it to them is that when you lay out the math for the first time and you go huh I really can do that in about four months mm -hmm. wow I never by Christmas were. The, the math, when you lay out a plan, even though you've absolutely done nothing yet, mm -hmm. you just laid out a plan. That's all you did. You just recognized it is doable. Yes. But you've actually done nothing. Mm -hmm. Your stress goes way down. Yeah. Because your hope goes way up. Oh, it's so true. And that's from a power of focus. You know, we, we know from psychology research that when we focus on something intently, we begin to see it everywhere. The example that they give in research studies is when you go buy a car, last time you bought a car, live studio audience, you can play along with me here. You remember commenting on how you saw that blue minivan or whatever you bought everywhere over the next week. Even your kids were like, hey, there's our car. Well, the God of cars didn't just drop them in on the road. It's that you you focus so intently on a purchase like this that we begin to see it. And as you described, Dave, when we begin to see that I can pay it off in four months, six months, 10 months, here's what happens. You begin to truly see the opportunities to make more money, to cut expenses everywhere, and it becomes so believable and that's what makes it so achievable because all of a sudden you go, wait a second, this is, this is, I can do this and the power of belief is unstoppable. Yeah, hope. Yeah, hope. it's hope. I I, I can hope. see it. That's exactly what it is. I, I actually have hope 
in an area. I've never been good at money. I've always been behind on my bills. It's always been chaotic. You have all these negative self-talk things, Mm -hmm. all these negative messages. Mm. And some of you, if you talked to my friend the way you talk to yourself, I would smack you. You don't talk to people I like like that. (laughs) You know, don't talk to yourself that way. Be nicer to yourself. And and let's get the negative thing out of there. And and it's not it's not heebie-jeebie mysterious stuff. It's just like, gosh, I can actually do this. And hope deferred, hopelessness, hope deferred makes the heart sick. But when desire comes, ah, yeah, it is the tree of life. Oh, that'll preach. This is The Ramsey Show. Based on our ratings and our rankings in the podcast and YouTube world and the radio world, there's a whole bunch of you are new. Thank you. We're glad you're here. And uh, if you want to learn more about what's going on, what they are talking about on the air and everything else, hit the uh, Get Started button at RamseySolutions.com. It's a free process that'll lead you kind of into where you are and uh, the different places we can take you depending on what your needs, wants, and desires are. So check it out. Click Get Started. Completely free. No obligation. No salesman will call. RamseySolutions.com. Josh is in Phoenix. Hey, Josh, welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hey, sir. How's it going? Better than I deserve. What's up? Yeah, I have a question for you. So I want to know, would it be smart to uh, sell my current home to buy a smaller home to have zero or well, little to no mortgage to be able to pay off the rest of my debt? Are you single? Uh, no. You have children? Married, three kids. Three kids. Okay. Right. One's uh, getting ready to graduate uh, in two days, actually, from high school to Wonderful. college. What's your, uh, what's your square footage? Um, I'm at 3,700 square feet right now. And what's the house worth? Uh, it's worth about a million. Okay. And what do you owe on it? Uh, 555. Okay. And what's your household income? Um, I'm retired, so with my pension and my part-time job, I would say about 12,000 take home. And how much do you have in a nest egg? Uh, I'm sorry. How much money do you have saved in a nest egg? Um, about 20,000 saved. Okay. Your wife doesn't work outside the home. How do you pay a $555,000 mortgage with $12,000? My mortgage, so my mortgage um, is about $3,000 a month. Um, I had another house that I had previously owned and sold um, to put down on this house, and I bought it um, when the interest rates were pretty low. Yeah, but you make $12,000 a year, you said. No, no, $12,000 a month. I apologize. Oh, I misunderstood. Yes. I feel so much better for you. I was so worried about you, Josh. <laughs> How's this guy living in a million-dollar house with a poverty-level income? I couldn't figure it out. Okay. Yeah, life is better no already. Worries. Okay. Do you have any debts other than the house? Yes, I have a uh, credit card debt about 41000 and car debt about fifty three thousand, and and then I also have a HELOC that is about fifty thousand. Okay, and what's the big car? Um, the big car is going to be uh, about thirty thousand of and the fifty three. Cars about okay, um, correct thirty of the fifty three. Okay, all right. So mm-hmm. basically, one hundred and fifty grand makes you debt free, and you make one hundred and forty four thousand or so a year. Correct. Okay. All right. Uh, do you hate your house? I actually love my house. Does your um, wife hate I'm your still, house? She loves it, um, but I, I just feel like there's three rooms um, in the house that we really don't use, and it's going to be four soon once. Yeah, um, I, I, I would sell $50,000 worth of cars before I would sell a million-dollar house. Okay. And I probably would do neither, actually, in your case. 
But what I would want to do is look up what you've identified is that this 150,000 in miscellaneous debt's a problem. That's what you've identified, and that the Correct. house is a overkill given that the kid one kid is leaving. Um, but Correct. the house is wonderful. You love the house. It's a great investment. It's doing well. There's no problems with it. So in your case, if if I woke up in your shoes, is how we answer questions here. I would just double down on a budget and talk to your wife and say, if we keep this house, we got to stop overspending and we got to clean this stupid debt up. And that's going to involve rolling up our sleeves and plowing through $150,000 worth of debt in about three years or two years and, and or selling some cars and doing it a little faster. I don't care which you choose to do, but you guys have just been sloppy. Okay. You yeah, make enough we, money to not be this in our debt. Agreed? Right. I, I agree. Yeah, that's sloppy. That's all it is. That credit card debt was just crap. You just here or there picked up something, something popped up, and you didn't have any cash. You only got $20,000 saved. And so basically you just – all the money comes in, all the money goes out, and only the names are changed to protect the innocent. Correct. Yeah. And that's not picking on you. It's just recognition of where you are and where you've got to go if you want to not be where you are, right? Correct. And that that's kind of where I'm at now. I just – I yeah. want to get out of debt. I want to be debt free. I had it once in my life, and yeah. I want to get back there again. So I would like for you to be back there and retain this house if you can. I think selling the house okay. is a desperation play, and everybody's going to be miserable because everybody likes this house. And I don't think it's necessary to clean the mess up mathematically. But what is necessary is you and your wife have a real talk about this budget thing. We're going to have to tighten that puppy up. Yeah, I agree. And I, I it's interesting to see whether or not he's driving – uh, this house situation, or she is, it's not a bad move. But I'm with you. I think they can get out of it and keep that house, and they're going to be in. They're going to be better off in the long run when they're debt free and have this house that's just growing. You need to change your habits anyway. That's correct. So you so, might as well change them. That's a good point. And see if you can't clean the mess up yeah. and keep the house. Now, even if you sell the house, and you don't change your habits. You got a mess. Yeah. Now, here's what here's what I want to ask you because we have a lot of new people coming in all the time from all these different platforms. Uh, selling the cars is an option. You mentioned that. But why in this case do you say, you know what, you don't have to sell the cars. You can pay those cars off. Uh, I'm just curious why you take that position. I well, want people I mean, to hear that. Basically, it adds, it's one third of the debt. Okay. okay. So there's a 40, 53, 50. Mm -hmm. So it's basically 50 grand is each, right. each, each bucket. That's right. And he makes 150. Right. All right. So what can we do? And we got a five hundred. We got a three thousand dollar payment. We got a five hundred fifty five thousand dollar mortgage. So, um, you know, it's not mandatory, but it's going to lengthen the get out of debt plan by at least a year. Right. Right. If you keep the cars. Right. And um, they're not quite high enough. If one of them had mm -hmm. been fifty three mm -hmm. or fifty, and the other one was three, right, I'd have probably sold the fifty. Okay. Okay. I'd probably pushed it because right. I'm looking at behavior patterns. Right. I'm trying to tweak there and, and get that going. But when they're both fairly, you know, yeah. 30 and 23, that kind of thing, then there, there's no uh, obvious offender right. there, right? It, yeah. It's more of a general concept yeah. offender than this. Because uh, it's doable. The point is they could pay those cars off and then they got some. Because I lean, Dave, I don't know if it's the way I'm wired. Because I drove a lot of crap cars for a long time. I mean, honestly, and, and and just because we were paying off debt in Atlanta and I was driving older cars and all that kind of stuff, I just lean towards if I can get rid of the car, I'm getting rid of the car. Because I don't know if it's your teaching and being your friend for so long, but I go, this is a depreciating asset. And, and the I, house is not. Yeah, I'm not trading the cars for a house. No. No never, way. Never, never. Always a bad trade. And uh, and Because here's the thing. Think about this. I was driving through a neighborhood the other day. I was cutting across a thing. And I cut through this new neighborhood mm -hmm. that was in the Nashville area here. So it was a um, basically right in the middle class in terms of uh, price range. It probably been three hundred to four hundred thousand dollars houses, which is square. That's median household mm -hmm. price. Actually, nationwide, that's the median home price right now. And so I'm driving down, and these nice homes that are fairly new, le less than five years old, are lined up right down the street. Uh, front opening garage doors, small lots, and I'm driving down through there, and I'm seeing really nice cars. Right. Yeah. In front of all of these houses. Right. So they're they're sitting there with fifty thousand, sixty thousand yeah. dollars worth of cars in front of a three hundred thousand dollar house. Oh yeah, yeah. And a hundred percent of those got payments on them. Absolutely. And a hundred percent of those people are trying to run a race with ankle weights on. Right. 
or, yeah. or trying to swim with a concrete yeah. block life preserver. I mean, whatever whatever yeah. bad metaphor we want to use here, right? But yeah, yeah it's just, and I'm going, this is the middle class. It's exactly right. Big depreciating cars and car payments, yeah. smaller home. Yeah. Wrong. Yeah. You know. See, and, and that's why, Dave, I've got this. And I appreciate your advice, and I want our audience to hear this. I, If it's me, I'm a momentum guy. I would probably I want to sell, sell cars. my cars. I would sell the cars. I would, too. Because I, I I have bought and sold cars my whole life. Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't get married to cars like some people right. do. I mean, some people get a car, and they're like, it's so large. And <laughs> selling it to some, emotionally because it's a big item. Yeah, sure. It feels like selling that's a house. Right. Yeah. But you could do a car transaction six times in a week. That's you know, exactly it right. It's not a thing. Yeah. yeah. And so, but house transactions are super expensive so and you got to move your butt every time you do those yes. anyway so Yikes. but the, uh but yeah I, I i don't get as attached to them and so i'm just like oh, i'll get another one yeah like, that's I, where i, I land yeah, i bought a truck a couple years ago and i had about five weeks on it i don't like it i just went and got a different truck i mean you know <laughs> it's chain you know it's not a big deal this is the ramsey show Hey folks, Ken Coleman here. Did you know The Ramsey Show is one of the most popular podcasts in the world? To get your daily dose of advice on life and money, check out all of our shows from The Ramsey Network wherever you listen to podcasts. Headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the pods, moving, and storage studios. It's The Ramsey Show, where we help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create actual amazing relationships. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Ken Coleman, Ramsey personality, number one best-selling author and host of The Ken Coleman Show podcast, Sirius XM. 75 radio stations is my co-host. Thanks for being with us, America. Giovanni is going to start off this hour in New York City. Hi, Giovanni. How are you? How are you doing, Dave? I'm great. Good. How can we help? So my question is uh, pretty brief. Um, I work at a cell phone retail company, and I'm looking to increase my income. I'm studying to be a software engineer. I don't know if you guys were aware of the Google Keynote that came out not too long ago regarding their new AI. And they stated that their new AI knows over 200 plus different coding languages. So in your opinion, should I still, should it still be worth it for me to study software engineering or should I be doing something else? Yes. And the reason is, is even though that is true, um, it is their AI that can do that because of the software engineers they employ. So I've interviewed two AI experts. And if you want to get into software engineering, AI is not going to eliminate your abilities to work. In fact, AI can only do what a human programs it to do. Is it intelligent? Yes. But the reason they call it AI, artificial intelligence, is because a human software engineer, software developers are creating the code that give the AI the ability to do what it's going to do. So you're going to be in more demand than ever because AI is coming like a freight train. It's here. It's going to continue to expand, uh, but you will be as valuable as ever. So I would not let that headline in any way deter you. Let me, uh, let me give you a parallel. Lots and lots of industries have been disrupted by technology. AI is a technology, and it is, going, it is a major disruptor. It's going to cause all kinds of things to happen it's pretty pretty uh wonderful in one sense and scary in another because the level of piracy yeah. the level of counterfeits uh that are going to come out of this are just if it's if some boundaries of some kind even if they are put on it you've always got the russian mafia or whatever hackers are going to do what they're going to do right so you you know this thing is it's it's a powerful uh for good or for evil weapon that has been unleashed and it is there so that's the reality. Now, on a much simpler plane, about the time I came out of high school, when the dinosaurs were roaming the earth, uh, computers were starting to kind of come on the scene. And uh, three of my buddies were studying to be architects. 
and computers suddenly were able to do drafting uh, with what's called the CAD system that is still in use today, although a much more sophisticated version than 30 or 40 years ago. But uh, the CAD, you know, computer automated drafting, uh, it's a lot easier to draw a house plan or draw a building plan today, a lot faster than it was in the old days when you had to draw it by hand. Now your computer program can do it. But you still need people with draftsman skills, and you still need architects to tell the CAD what to do mm -hmm. and engineers to tell the CAD what to do. Uh, and, and so that's the situation that we're the exact that's same right. thing we're talking about here. It did not do away with the need for professionals in the industry. It made them much more efficient. That's right. And people sitting, if you wanted to sit at a draftsman's board with a ruler and uh, whatever the tools were and draw all day long, oh, you're out of business. You're done. Because no one does that anymore. Mm. Because they, it, it's no one. It's, it's impossible to keep up with the, how fast a computer can do that, much faster than a human. But, um, but to be able to tell the computer what to do requires the exact same set of skills. Yeah. I want to give our audience that may resonate with this question here from Giovanni two pieces of news so that you can get over the fear factor. Number one, we are seeing right now there's about a, a job and a half available, a technology job, just in general, tech jobs. Uh, for every person that wants to get in it. So the opportunity is massive in tech. Number two, most of you have seen headlines throughout the last six months about major companies like Meta, Facebook's parent company, Google, laying tens and tens of thousands of technology workers off. And people go, oh, no, but here's the deal. Now the data's come back, Dave, that those workers are getting hired within a month for other smaller companies. And these big tech companies, this is what they do. They staff up. You had you had companies like Redfin, their CEOs, Google, Salesforce, admitting that they overhired to keep talent away from their competition. And so the minute that the recession word gets uttered, these public companies are worried about their stock price and they drop talent. But here's the deal. Those people are getting rehired quickly. So all that to say, if you want to go into software, I can't think of a better field to get into right now. Yeah, it's um, and, you know, creatives and content producers yes. uh, of any kind, audio, video, that's right, uh, blogging, all of that is going to be affected. Yes. But enhanced. Um, here, here's the thing you have to, in order to be a thought leader, you have to have a thought. <laughs> Isn't that true? And, and so, you know, the, AI cannot replace that. Mm -hmm. and, and so art artistry. You know, quality graphic production um, has to be installed by someone who has the eye. That's correct. Even if it is then reproduced and replicated in its various forms by AI. Mm. So it's still there, and you still got to look at it and go, I think I'm going to use human judgment here and say that sucks. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you can still have that as a possibility. My guys typed in the other day that just to make fun of me. Oh no! In the in the chat thing, yeah, the chat thing. You know, Dave Ramsey does a rant against AI, and it and it and it formulated something pretty. It, quick. Oh, it wrote out a really I'll long, bet it did. Yeah, nasty. It's fascinating. I, I, how mad I was at AI, <laughs> and it was pretty nasty. Oh, I mean, wow. it was. Um, did I they, mean, not not nasty like vulgar. Okay, I was going to say they just, didn't add some color that you no, don't normally no, no, add. No, 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 oh, okay. it, it, AI wouldn't have found me saying that because exactly. I'm not vulgar. That's so right. Okay, you, it has to find something you've actually used to yeah. get the tone right. Oh yeah, and it picked it up. But it was um, pretty much like me ranting against credit card debt or student loan debt, but just AI, and they just oh, that's did an fun. overlay, and it that's was uh, fun. Obviously, I didn't do that, but because um, <laughs> I'm not anti AI and I'm not freaked out about it. Uh, the only thing I'm actually worried about is just that the stinking stuff steals everything. That in honestly, a uh, person the, the in piracy, your, the piracy yeah. and co I mean the well, number of copyrights and trademarks and yes. images and brands that we have yeah. developed at great expense. Yeah. Uh, it'll you know a, a, a nefarious use. Well, here's where another steal one. it. Well, here's what I'm concerned about: is people doing deep fake stuff. Yeah, oh, yeah. Where they can put words in your mouth. Yeah. And literally create you yeah. saying something you never said. And I would just say, as a caution. Yeah. Please, yeah. folks. Yeah. Well, we've joke about don't believe everything you read or see on the internet. I think AI is going to make a lot of crazy, wacky stuff out there. You better consider your source. Yeah, that's the kind of stuff like an effect of presidential election. Yes, sir. You know, it come out has yeah Biden saying something that made sense or something. You know oh, I mean? uh oh. <laughs> that's an interesting use of it. Maybe they should try that. He strung a sentence together. What happened? Yeah. This is The Ramsey Show. <laughs>
Y'all, there's a lot you can't control when it comes to healthcare, but there is something you should check out that can help. Christian Healthcare Ministries. CHM is not insurance. It is budget-friendly, biblically-based health cost sharing. That means a community of members helping share the burden of each other's healthcare costs. They help people just like you in all 50 states. So see if CHM could be right for your family. Learn more today at chministries.org slash budget. Ken Coleman Ramsey personality is my co-host today. Ken, uh, lots of people graduating from yes, high school it's that right time now. of year. And uh, I got to tell you, I can't think of anything we've ever done at Ramsey that is as good as uh, the get to clear assessment for a high school graduate that you and the research team put together. This assessment is pretty incredible and We've got it one specifically built for teenagers, right? Yeah, the Get Clear assessment that I created a few years ago has been really popular for adults. And so I got with Ramsey Ed and we said, let's make a student version. Is it possible for your high school student to actually have some pretty clear ideas about the direction they want to go in? The answer is yes. Career but you gotta, wise. Yeah, career wise. But you got to give them the tools to be able to dig in and get some self awareness. And parents, here's why it's important. Very simply, it's going to help you help them. Make that right education choice. What is that right next step for them so that you're spending that money you've been saving wisely and their time wisely? And so that's why we built this, Dave. It's the student version of the Get Clear Assessment. Perfect time, perfect graduation gift uh, for the student in your life. Yeah. The Get Clear Assessment for students is available right now. It's only 30 bucks. Uh, get it for a student. Absolutely the best 30 bucks they could possibly spend. Know thyself. Mm. Right? RamseySolutions.com slash store. The Get Clear Assessment takes just a few minutes to take it, and the results, the report it spits out is pretty stinking amazing. Promise you, it's worth a lot more than 30 bucks. And so, yeah, you you just don't want to be the parent (laughs) of the kid that goes on to uh, American Idol. Right. And can't sing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you never had the guts to tell them, so Simon Cowell gets to trash them on national TV. Yeah, that's exactly right. So, I mean, like, you know... Son, you should not be an artist. All of your drawings <laughs> yeah, are right. stick figures. That's right. You and the, and not, you know, you're really uh, not up for this, son. The flip side of this too is is uh, over fifty percent of American college students right now are spending five years or more. And parents, you don't want that either. And so help helping them get That's an idea they're early discovering on. Discovering themselves. Right. Well, we actually have a tool that'll help them see themselves and you can verify it, parents, because when you see this report, you're gonna be able to put new language and new words around what you've always known about your kiddo. So it's a fun tool. Telling the truth is important. It is. Marie is whoops, it's not Marie. Hello. Let me try again. All right. Marie is there. She's in Los Angeles. Hi Marie. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi, Dave. Hi, Ken. How are you? Great. How can we help? My question is, is it wise for my husband and I to put all the money we've saved for our emergency fund and our down payment into a high-yield savings account? And if we move that much money at once, is that going to set off any red flags for the IRS? Answer number two is no. It doesn't set off anything for the IRS. Um, okay. How much money is in your emergency fund? Um, we are kind of padding it at about 50000 right now. Okay. How do you kind of? It either is or it isn't. How much is in your emergency fund? Oh, you've got well, it mixed together. Right now, oh, it's all oh, in no, one. Oh, no, 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 um, no, no, no. You, are... you need to separate these two into two different accounts. Okay. Because you will accidentally use up your emergency fund for your down payment when you get house fever. Okay. No, you need to separate them. So mm-hmm. let, let's declare right now, for purposes of our discussion, you can change it later, an amount for your emergency fund is 50000 How much then is in the down payment fund? Two forty. Two hundred forty thousand. Yes. So there's two ninety total. Yes. Good. Okay. Yeah, these definitely need to be in separate accounts. High yield savings okay. that you've uh, looked up is paying what? Um, somewhere around four, somewhere in the high 3.7, somewhere yeah, in the yeah. 4.3. Right. 
That's about right. Okay. And so um, the $50,000 account is going to pay $2,000 a year. Mm-hmm. Okay. Or if you put it in not a high yield, it's not going to pay half that, right? But 1000 or 2000 does not change your life on your emergency fund. It's okay to do it. I'd like to get a little more. So, yeah, move it to a high yield. That's fine. But don't act like you did something because it's not enough money to worry about. Okay. The other account, you're hopefully not going to leave that alone long. You're getting ready to buy a house soon, aren't you? Well, we're kind of leaving that in God's timing. If it was my timing, I would have been moved five years ago. Okay. Um, What is the sign for you that God is ready? Um, well, we're planning on moving out of state, so we're just kind of looking at all the pieces and making sure that everything's right. My husband would be basically starting his career fresh because he's a... When are we going to do this if you think, if God showed up and told you it was okay? Sorry, what was the first half of your When question? are you going to do this if it all falls out similar to what you think it might? Um, I mean, I'm ready this year. Um, well, okay, let me l- kind of- let me ask this, Marie. Is it because he hasn't found a job? There's a lot of trepidation and fear because he'd have to basically start over. Is that what you said? Um, there's kind of a lot of different factors, but that that is one of them. What um, are the other are factors? Looking- it's really important. That's what we're digging at. What are the factors besides him getting a good job? What else? Um, really, it's it's just. Um, I mean, you guys are, are men of faith, and, and you know that when, when God puts it on your heart that now is the time, then now is the time, and we just haven't felt like now is the time yet. But okay, but there's that- not any observable variables in the marketplace or in your life that you're waiting on that. You're just waiting on peace from the Holy Spirit yes. in prayer. Yes. Okay. All right. So I'm going to give you a guess and say in 12 months, we're probably doing this. That's what I was after. How long are we tying up this 240,000 bucks? Are we going to tie it up Mm -hmm. for five years or are we going to tie it up for for six or eight months? And it sounds like six or eight months or a year is probably right. So yeah, you're going to make a little money in a high yield savings account on this. But once again, this is not a long-term play. This is a, it's a quality parking space for Mm -hmm. money. That's all it is. But we're not, we don't park money for long. We're parking it until we get ready to make this move. And, and uh, th- that, you know, the Holy Spirit releases you guys to go do with a sense of peace where you're, where you're going. And so um, that's cool. That, that's fine. But I, I'm going to give you a reasonable guess and say that these things are building up and there's, it's about ready to go. This thing's about ready to happen. Yeah, I, I don't want to take everybody to church here. I would just say to to Marie, I, I think her peace would probably increase. His peace would increase if he had that job situation cleared up. And and I think that um, sometimes we overthink, and I think we 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 blame a lot of stuff on God. I'm not saying she's doing that, but I am saying that I think that at some point we have free will and we have the option to make things well, there's happen. A, there's a there's a good there's a good one two punch here. There is. It's the old. Uh, uh, St. Augustine's uh, work mm. like it all depends on you. Pray like it all depends on God. Yeah. If you want corn, you, you got to plant, go plant it. it and, and tend it. Oh, and guess what? You don't get control of the rain or the sun. <laughs> that's right. So that's his part. So yeah. you got to do both. There's yeah. a one-two punch. Yeah. You do the do all of your parts, and sometimes the peace and the timing lines up. Yeah. One of the ways I, I consider myself to be guided mm. by God is that the circumstances are lining up, yes. and I have peace. Yes. If the circumstances are lined up and I don't have peace, then I wait. Yep. If I have peace but the circumstances aren't lined up, then I wait. Mm. So uh, And so I'm, I'm pushing on all of those things at the same time because there's this cause effect of works and yep. faith That's right. that are, that are a good part of a healthy, mature believer's process. Mm. And it sounds like you're doing all of those things. Yep. I'm not question, we're not questioning that. But uh, since we uh, got all mystical there for a second, it's worth explaining how we yes. go at this stuff. Open phones at 888-825-5225. You jump in. We'll talk about your life and your money. Let's circle back, though, and for the rest of you on emergency funds. Your emergency fund is not an investment. Mm -hmm. Everybody say not an investment. Not an investment. It's not an investment. It is insurance. Insurance doesn't make you money. It costs you money. It costs you money to protect the things that make you money. That's what insurance does. The emergency fund is not there to make money. It's there to it's a pad, an umbrella between you and the storms of life. 
That's what it's for. It keeps you from cashing out your 401k, which is making money, or having to put your home on the market and fire sale it because you can't pay the payments because you lost your job. It protects the assets that are going up because it's a pad. It's an umbrella for the storms of life. And so what it makes is irrelevant because it's never really going to make much because it's going to be liquid. So if it makes 4 or 3.7 instead of 1.7, great, but whoop de doop that's really not what it's for. Go ahead and get a little better parking spot, but it's not necessary to build wealth. What's necessary to build wealth is to have the emergency fund separate. This is The Ramsey Show. If you're like most people, your home is your most valuable asset. And when you wanna make improvements, it can feel like everything costs too much or takes too long. But something as simple as custom window coverings from blinds.com can completely change your space and add value to your home. We've recommended blinds.com for over a decade, so you know you can trust them. From blinds, drapes, and shutters to motorized shades, they make it easy and affordable to upgrade your entire home, and their team is ready to help with everything from design consultation to measuring and installation. Plus, there are never any misleading quotes or hidden fees. Everything's backed by their 100% satisfaction guarantee, and shipping is always free. See why Blinds.com is the number one online retailer of custom window coverings. Go to Blinds.com now and save 45% off selected products. Visit Blinds.com today for more info. America. We're glad you're here. Open phones at 888 5225 Today's question of the day is brought to you by Neighborly, your hub for home services. Now that the weather is warming up, it's time to enjoy your outdoor space. Neighborly's Mosquito Joe service can help make your outdoor area pest-free so you can enjoy being outside in comfort. Visit Neighborly.com to reach your local Mosquito Joe today. Today's question comes from Jared in South Carolina. He writes, my wife and I are currently in baby step one, and I'm an associate marriage and family therapist. I work for a counseling job as well as I run my own counseling practice. I don't have enough clients on my caseload at this time, and of course, it's not enough income. I'm doing what I can to increase the load to bring more in, but no success. I specialize in couples, parenting, blended families, and I would love to do something with it, such as workshops, but I don't know how to find these opportunities, any suggestions. Okay, first of all, if you want to get into the workshop space, you don't find them, you got to create them. And that, that leads to where I think you've got to go to increase your pipeline. This is just like a sales job. I mean, you, you, for your own business, you have got to create leads that turn into opportunities. So let's look at those target clients, couples, parents, blended families. So I'd start with, in your zip code, your area, Who's serving those people? So you've got churches have couples in them. You've got schools are, are obviously uh, taking care of these parents' children, uh, the blended families. Uh, look and see who's serving these. Are these nonprofits? Are they uh, government agencies, faith-based organizations? Here's why. If you make yourself known to those organizations that are serving your target clients, that you are a counselor and you offer counseling services, and you're going to do a workshop online or in person. Will they host a workshop if you take care of everything else? They simply open up a room to you and make it open to their uh, their clients. And so that's where you've got to build the pipeline. There are a lot of people hurting right now, and you've just got to get in front of them. So I think that's the first thing. Now, the other advice I'd give, Dave, is this. While you're doing that, to get momentum in baby step one, which is for if you're new listener, new viewer, baby step one is we want to get $1,000 as that starter emergency fund. I'm doing anything and everything, Jared, while I'm taking the advice I gave you 
to make a thousand dollars that's yard work that's working a second or third job right now just an hourly wage to get that first baby step underway and that's going to be a big victory for you absolutely completely agree with that um and and ken is exactly right here what we know post covid is that there is a backlog a waiting list to see a therapist to see a counselor you can't get in so the fact that you have all this open time is pretty uh, disturbing. Yeah. So it means you've done absolutely no marketing of any quality. So, yeah, I, I would contact um, every business in the area that has um, 50 to 200 people working at it and talk to the, mm. uh, the it, it, whoever, the HR director, the, the VP of operations, and tell them if you've got families in here that are struggling, we do marriage counseling. And if somebody's got marriage troubles, they're not really working well right now. Their productivity is low. So uh, we'll help you with that. Uh, talk to the pa- every pastor in a 20-mile radius. Just drop by and see them. Say, hey, uh, because a lot of them uh, – have more counseling load than they can handle. That's correct. And they and you can get into sometimes deeper stuff than they want than they want to get into, uh, and more extensive, uh, longer term counseling situations than they want to get into. Um, pastoral counseling is different than being a therapist, and so um, <clears throat> or it should be. Yeah. So all all of those things, but yeah, you need to stir up some business is what it amounts to. Uh, if you let enough people know that you're there. In the current environment that we're in, you're going to be overwhelmed with business. And that's where I would spend a lot of my time. So good question, man. We appreciate you joining us. Phil is with us in Roanoke, Virginia. Hi, Phil. How are you? Hey, Dave. I'm doing good. Um, hey, Ken. Uh, thanks for taking my call. Sure. Um, I just started listening to you guys here a couple months ago. Um, got my wife starting to get into it and stuff. But um, I'm not sure what baby step I'm on. Um, I thought I was doing good. Um, I thought I was uh, paying down my uh, house early. Um, what I did about a year and a half ago, I was having major problems with my mortgage company. So I went to my local bank, and uh, they gave me the option of either refinancing with a mortgage payment or taking an unsecured personal loan. So um, I ended up opting for the unsecured personal loan so that I had the title in my hand with without a lien on it and stuff like that. And I've been paying it down. I'm tripling payments right now. It should be paid off within a couple of years. But um, the more I listen to your show and the more I, I look at your um, uh, web page and stuff like that, personal loans are considered consumer loans and should be baby step number two. Did I transfer my mortgage loan from basically a mortgage to a, a baby step number two where I should deplete my um uh, safety fund to nah. pay it off nah. and then build it back up or can I treat it? What's like the mortgage? balance? What's the balance on the loan? It's only like 22,000. Oh, how much is in your savings account? Um, about 20, about 22,000, okay. but that's, that includes my emergency fund. I understand. My fully funded emergency and what's your household fund. income? Uh, 120,000. Okay. So let's pay it off by September. Yeah, I, yeah, I'm having little issues bringing my wife on board with it. We talked about financial planning university. We haven't took forward steps on it yet. She, yeah. she still has a credit card. I don't have any credit card, so I'm slowly working on her. But it's going to. I don't know if I can take it by September, with, unless I get her fully on board. Well, that's another issue. Yeah. Yeah, that's a lot bigger issue than whether to pay the mortgage off or what baby step you're on. You're not really on a baby step until the two of you get on the same page, and then you could talk about baby mm-hmm. steps. Because there's the, okay. all the data says that until you're on the same page, your likelihood of building wealth is very low. Oh, okay. Yeah, there's just very few people drag a spouse kicking and screaming into rich. Yeah, she, she's kind of on board. She just owes I know, but you're, now you're covering for her. And, yeah, I am. Yeah. So y'all got to get on the same page, dude. I mean, that's the okay. that's the 100-pound gorilla or the 800-pound gorilla in the conversation. So, um, yeah, you guys got to you get that fixed, and then all of a sudden this other is going to fix itself. I don't really care whether you call it. It's only $22,000, man. You make 120 and you got 22 in the bank. I mean, you know, it's not yeah. it's not like it's going to – you can mess this up as long as you keep moving towards it. But it should not take you three years to clear this. Three months, maybe, but it shouldn't take you three years to clear it once the two of you are on the same page. That's the big deal there. And so, um, 
All right, Dave, I got to ask you, because you've been answering this question a long time. I think this is a perfect setup. Again, a lot of new people all the time on the show. Here you got a husband who gets it. He's all in. He's crushing it. His life's kind of there, in his words, still has a credit card. How do you get that vision to align? Well, I, I think we just start talking about, okay, number one cause of divorce in North America today, money fights and money problems. Number one, disagreement in marriages, money fights and money problems. So if we can get rid of the number one thing in our marriage that causes negative situations, that's a big deal for any marriage. It's the number one. I mean, if the number one reason you die of bear attacks is you wear red shirts, then you would go, I'm done with red shirts. Right. You know what I mean? It's like, you, you, that'd be it. So um, whatever, whatever metaphor you want to use. So that's number one. So honey, you know, it's very important for the quality of our relationship that we get rid of the number one problem of relationships, and that's for us to be on the same page. So let's sit down and dream together about what we want our future to look like. And let's get in detail. Let's make it in HD, high definition dreams, not vague, fuzzy ones in the clouds. Because where there is no vision, the people perish. So we're going to get on the same page. And as our friend Henry Cloud says, we're going to have a desired future. Mm. And, and we're going to design the future in such a way that we both had a vote on it. We both want to be there. And we're both willing to sacrifice to get to that future. And then we say, okay, what has to be true that's not true now to get to that future? Okay, it will be the stop of the use of the credit cards. It would be clearing off these debts. It would be less living on a budget together where we should have a, every dollar has an assignment. We're in agreement. And then the dollars are all pointed at the agreed target. Mm. Once we've got an agreed target that we both had a vote on and buy in on, that's called vision. And it'll solve the whole thing. Yep. That's so good. Ken Coleman, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Jake is in Atlanta. Hi, Jake. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi, guys. Thank you for having me. Sure. What's up? Uh, so my wife and I are celebrating. She just got accepted into uh, grad school for her doctorate of physical therapy yesterday. Wow. Um, However, yeah, we're super excited. However, we are also not sure how to go about paying for this. We are debt-free. Um, we've been debt-free for the past three years, um, and we do not want to take out student loans, but that's looking like our only option. Not not entirely sure how to get her through grad school on a single income. What? Uh, uh, is, okay, I, I know what a master's in PT allows you to do PT, what does a PhD give you that the master's doesn't give you as far as career opportunities? Uh, so <laughs> that's a great question. Uh, from my understanding, it, she'd be able to run her own practice and prescribe uh, medicine and, you know, stuff like that. I think she can run her own practice yeah. otherwise, but she probably can't prescribe medicine without a supervising okay. physician. Yeah. I don't think there's anything that keeps you from running a practice. But the actual prescription, yeah, no doubt about that. Okay. How much is it going to cost, this particular school? Uh, I think the estimated cost is about 100000 It's a two-year accelerated program. Okay. And she been trying to get into this one, or she been applying to multiple, and this is the one that said yes? That's right. She's applied to multiple, and this is the only one that said yes. Okay. Uh, Dave, I... I my advice on this is, is I'd be patient until I until I save the money up, and I would be looking to get into uh, other programs. If this is even a reality, I'll be honest with you. I don't know the going rate. I don't know what what a what a, uh, uh, a low, medium, high prices on physical therapy doctorates, uh, but nobody cares. 
No one. Not one patient will ever care where she gets her doctorate. That's the first thing I'd say. Nor will they care if she has a doctorate. Even if she has it. If you want to run the practice. Uh, I but I know you're excited. If I go to a PT and I have, yeah. I have never once asked whether they had a doctorate or whether they had a master's. <laughs> Nobody does. They're a PT. It's what they do. Yeah. So I'd be patient. I would be patient and save up the money, and I sure would like to find a place where I could go for 60 again, if that's realistic, because nobody cares. Yeah. Uh, so there's two categories that we pursue something like this, two buckets that cause us to pursue something like this, Jake, and we're leaning heavily on one of them mm -hmm. in this discussion. Bucket number one, when you pursue a degree or a, an advanced degree of some kind like this, we're looking for... What does that open up for you as extra income potential or uh, opportunities in the marketplace that you wouldn't have without it? Okay. In other words, it's permission to play at a different level. Okay. And uh, the point we're making here is other than the writing of prescriptions, unless I don't know what I'm talking about, and I probably don't actually, but uh, other than the writing of prescriptions, I've, I've been a patient to a PT, but I've not been in a PT program. And I've worked with a lot of PTs paying off their student loans over the years. And so, um, so, so I'm not sure this adds $100,000 in marketplace value to her career. That's my point in that bucket. The other bucket that is also a valid bucket is the pursuit of knowledge and the uh, academic pride of getting a Ph.D. And that is a valid thing to want to go get that. OK, you follow me? Mm -hmm. So none of the yeah. none of the and, and none of these discussions are we trying to be a dream killer. But um uh, uh, you guys need to sit down and talk about, since you don't have the money to do this, it needs to have marketplace value more than academic pride value. Academic pride value would be called a luxury to go get a Ph.D. in something that doesn't change my life. Okay? Um, that fall, so whatever portion of this that falls into that is the luxury portion. The other portion is, yeah, there's legitimate opportunities. I can expand my practice. I can do things I can't do, and I can make more money because I have this. And those are the two things you need to look at and mm -hmm. compare and talk through. And then we've got to figure out a way to pay cash for it or I'm not doing it. But what happens, and it happens in the medical field, more often probably than it does in other fields, is there is this pride, there is a prestige mm -hmm. that goes with, uh, I'm an MD, I'm not a nurse. And uh, they're taught that in the medical school, right? I mean, so it, it, there's a pride, uh, 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 it's a pecking order thing, right, that goes with it. And the PhD versus the lowly master's degree, um, but it, 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 other than bragging rights, it needs to have some economic value. It does. And, and Jake, if you've not seen our amazing documentary, Borrowed Future, I really would like for you and your wife to watch it. And if nothing else, to specifically watch the testimony of the dentist in that. And, and that, that will just, he went in over a million dollars. We're talking about a hundred thousand here, but it is not worth it. Yeah. And I think Dave laid this out beautifully, Jake. This is a need versus a want. If it is an absolute need, then it is worth the wait. If it is a want, and yeah. it has no redeeming value beyond just the prestige piece, then it's, it's absolutely it, you must wait. Is there a health organization that desires to have a PhD, PT? working on their team that would pay for this now that's a great point and i think that's right because we're in it we're in an environment right now if the job market's right in a certain yeah. part of the country they go you know what you're I'll, bright I'll move my license over there and work for you guys yes. and you pay for my phd yeah i like that i like that approach i would do that one uh in a heartbeat for either bucket yeah just because you want a phd that's yeah. fine somebody else is paying for it yeah yeah you that's right one? that's right. good that's yeah. good yeah. yeah but um so so guys um what has happened with the student loan debacle, $1.7 trillion, mm -hmm. 44 million Americans uh, having their lives altered, mm -hmm. and higher education's expense rate going through the roof, and this false worship at the altar of a degree. Now, again, I'm not aiming at Jake's wife on this. That's right. Just making a general statement now as a follow-up. Mm -hmm. uh, but but th this 
instead of saying current knowledge is the currency now degrees are the currency and then we got over into the land of any old degree and pay any amount to get any old degree now we really got into a stupid zone and what the it what it started out being was to expand your mind and your view of the world yes so you would read english literature mm -hmm. which does not have marketplace value does not does not change your income if you've read english literature but it does change your brain's ability to work it does change your critical thinking skills uh your vocabulary does that it opens doors for you all of those kinds of things method of speaking all, all of these kinds of, oh, that's an educated person that that is there's a reality to those things but we got so far over there that now there's a bunch of us old rednecks that are going look it's got to pay for itself or we're not doing it so you got to get a degree that's actually usable and that you see a measured change in your income that is obvious that that is a reasonable change in your income versus what you paid for it an roi that's right because here's the reality, and you'll see it in this documentary, Borrowed Future. Here's a dentist that I absolutely believe when he got into it, he was passionate about the work. He knew what he could do. But the weight of the debt was so bone crushing that you don't even enjoy. You will end up resenting the degree and the work you do because of the absolute hole that you are crawl as you've crawled into and it feels impossible to get out. Now we can help you get out. And we helped that dentist and we've helped a lot of people. But the point is there's no need to rush into this one hundred thousand dollar PhD. Don't rush. Save up. Get a grant. Uh, do what Dave said. You know, maybe you get a company to fund it for you because they want your talent. There's a lot of ways to do this. Yeah. I just want you to think about why we're doing it, what we're getting for what we're paying. You know, everything else you do a value judgment on except education. And on education, it's like, anything! We'll pay anything! <laughs> That's right. That's right. Because it's important! <laughs> and no, it's not. Not at some point. This is The Ramsey Show. Hey, it's Ken. If you love the show and want a deeper dive on your money journey, we have a weekly newsletter that gives you trending and helpful articles and tips on following the Ramsey way. Go to RamseySolutions.com today to sign up for our newsletter. Again, that's RamseySolutions.com to sign up for our weekly newsletter. of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the Pods Moving and Storage Studios. It's the Ramsey Show, where we help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create actual amazing relationships. Ken Coleman, Ramsey personality, host of the Ken Coleman Show, and author of the number one best-selling book, From Paycheck to Purpose, all about careers and work, is my co-host today. The phone number is 888-825-5225. Scott is going to start off this hour from St. Louis. Hi, Scott. How are you? I'm better than I deserve. How are you? Better than I deserve. What's up? Well, uh, I've been, uh, I work at a, a mid-sized church here in Missouri, and uh, I've been doing the job with full, uh, two full-time people for about three and a half months, and, uh, you know, I'm I just need some advice on what to do uh, for my career and um, what my next steps are. Do you want to stay there and keep growing within that organization? <clears throat> well, um, I, I do. I do love the church I'm at. I love the area, our community, our life groups. Um, what do you mean when you're saying you're doing the work of two people? Yeah. What's that mean? So uh, I work in church media and. Uh, our previous media guy left uh, about three and a half months ago. So I've been doing everything from Sunday production, video editing, graphic design, um, volunteer management, social media. So I'm just doing everything. And I'm, uh, I had about, uh, whenever he left, I said, okay, I can probably do this for about three months. And 
three right. months is hit. I haven't heard anything about my job, and right. so that's uh, so, so I'm not sure. So Scott, that's why I asked you the question because if you weren't doing the job of two people right now, would you be calling us right now about your career and your future, or is this I'm exhausted and I'm trying to figure out if I stay or I go? That's what I'm trying to get to the heart of. Would you be calling us if you weren't doing the work of two people? Well, before he left, uh, I might have, because <laughs> okay. I was, uh, you know, just uh, my passion is video editing and related kind of things, and I was um, more set as a um, social media sort of role. Okay, so um, so let me interrupt real quick because that's an important distinction right yep. there, and I want to validate what you're feeling because this is not you're not I don't think you're being sensitive here. It's if you're spending more time doing something during your day that you really don't enjoy, that's going to eventually wear on you. So in other words, I would say you're probably um, you're probably on the right bus, but you're in the wrong seat on the bus. Is that a fair diagnosis? Yeah, I'd say that's fair. Okay. Mm-hmm. So when you ask an open-ended question, I need some career advice. No, we've got to really figure out, okay, what's the tension you're dealing with? And you've got two tensions I hear. One is you're feeling a little overworked. And when someone feels overworked, it's very easy for them, Dave, to start to feel underappreciated, even though that may not be the case. I mean, there are times where, where we are in a great organization that we want to be there and we're shorthanded. You know what? we got to pull the weight of two people because we believe in the mission. So that's 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 one option. Uh, the other option is, is when you feel overworked and you're not hearing anything about, hey, when am I getting some relief? You start to believe that maybe you're underappreciated and we've got to deal with that. That's one tension. The second tension is, are you in the right seat of the bus and on the right seat? I don't think you are. And so now the question is, is can, what must be true for me to get into that right seat at this current church? Do you understand? And so you're gonna have to talk with your leader about both of those. This is a this is a mm-hmm. adult conversation where we don't go in with attitude, we don't go in feeling offended, we go in with some humility, but we say to our leader, I need your leadership. I need you to weigh in on this. We're about three months in. I'm feeling a little overworked here, and and I just want to get some direction from you. Um, and, and then ultimately, uh, you know, I want to be in video editing, and I'm spending a lot of time over here. Uh, what are your thoughts on how I can get more into that seat? We've got to have that conversation first, because absent of that conversation, you're filling in the blanks. And that's not fair to your leader, and it's not fair to you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Does that feel like where we're at? I think so. And you, I do you, have you know a, that a time when you couldn't mystery. read your wife's mind? <laughs> you remember that time? Uh, which, you went kind of past. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, your leader is the same way. Yeah. You can't read your mind. Mm-hmm. They don't know what's going on. So you got to go in yeah. and sit down and go, hey, um, listen, I'm more than willing to carry the water here. And um, I knew when so-and-so left that somebody had to pick it up, and I was willing to do that. I can't do that long-term because it, it's going to break my back. And so let's talk about how we get some of the weight off, and uh, let's talk about how I can serve this place best in video editing and how we can have a, a game plan to get there. And if I can see how we're going to get there, then I can help us carry the water. I'm, I'm a team player, okay? And I'll do whatever it mm-hmm. takes. I'm not a whiner. But uh, but I can't. This is not sustainable. And uh, if your leader hears all that, they go, "Oh yeah, well I just thought you were getting it all done. I didn't. I didn't know you were working eighty hours a week. I thought you were working 40. No, they uh, they know I'm doing a bunch of overtime. Okay. Yeah. All but right. again, you gotta have the conversation because this is when you find out. By the way, Scott, if it's a healthy leadership culture. Yeah. Dave, mm-hmm. what's a healthy leadership response to that if when a person comes in with the right spirit and shares it that way? Yeah, I mean, we don't want you to work more than one full-time job, and we would prefer you to work in the in your skill set, and we would prefer to work in your passion, which usually are similar. And so, yeah, you've mm-hmm. got, you know, so if you want to move to video editing, hey, I'm going to start, we're going to, we're going to post, and we're going to try to get the backfill on the other piece, and uh, thanks for helping us until we can get that backfill. And we'll get her done. You know, I mean, that's uh, I can't. But if you expect them to wave a wand and in 20 seconds, suddenly not, you know, this other position to be filled, you got to work with. them. That's right. But yeah. if you're willing to do that, a, a healthy leader is going to come alongside and go, yeah, obviously, yeah. we're a man down. The guy quit and uh, you picked up a slack. Thank mm-hmm. you. And so now we got to have a plan to cover the backfill. That's right. And uh, the backfill may involve 
picking up your old job and you take the other guy's old job. That's exactly right. Which moves you over to video editing, if I understood the story right. That's right. Yeah. Good and, stuff. And I hear this a lot, Dave, and I see it a lot on social media. And I want to caution some folks out there that are feeling some frustration. And I'm going to, I'm going to challenge you for a moment. I want to provoke you for just a second. It's not okay for you to be frustrated at your leader if you have not properly communicated with your leader. Now, I, I rail on bad leadership all the time because I see it and I hear from people that are quitting jobs. But I also will be the first to say, if you haven't communicated to your leader very clearly what's going on and, and work with them and give them a chance to you, actually with humility. lead yeah, not, with humility, belligerence. that's right. Yeah. Don't walk in there with a case of demands. But if you haven't done that, you don't have the right to truly be frustrated because as Dave is, that was a great analogy. It's like trying to have your spouse assume that they can read your mind or you can read their mind. It's just, it's not healthy. Well, when you're dropping the pots and pans from 18 inches into the, <laughs> into the thing, and then I say, what's wrong? You, you were supposed nothing? to have already told me before you started <laughs> dropping pots and pans. That's a very good I point. I can't read your freaking mind. <laughs> you know, that's from 41 years of marriage. Thank you very much. But yeah. And leaders are the same way. Yeah. Same deal. Every wife uses that technique, I think, at some point or oh, another. The door's just a little bit Is something bit wrong? Louder. Nothing's wrong. Black! Yeah. Nothing's wrong. Black! Right. You know, it's like, yes, something's <laughs> wrong. This is The Ramsey Show. Ken Coleman Ramsey personality is my co-host today. Caroline is with us in South Carolina. Hi, Caroline. How are you? Good. How are y'all? Better than we deserve. What's up? So I just had a question about buying a car while we're still in baby step two. Um, we've got about $20,000 of debt to pay off. We currently have a 19-year-old Honda Odyssey, about 237,000 miles, um, Great mechanical condition, but it is a salvage title because of hitting a deer. And our other car is a 16-year-old Buick. It's only got 128000 but we've had to dump oh, close to 2000 into it recently. So I kind of told my husband no more than maybe another 500 if something breaks down. So I'm just trying to figure out, should we get another car? And if so, which of the three options I'm considering makes the most sense? What's, uh, so what's your household income? Um. Gross is about ninety, but take home is only about sixty-five because of mandatory retirement. What? Um, how much debt have you paid off so far? So <laughs> that's a long story. Um, we just kind of stumbled back into it accidentally. Um, I might be an education addict. Uh, we had actually paid off sixty thousand um, all of my master's debt, and then I was working on my doctorate and I had some cash flow issues and. Stupidly went back in. Okay, and that's the twenty thousand. Yeah. Okay. And I should graduate either the summer or the fall yeah. with my doctorate. Good. And what? Education. I'm a teacher. Okay. Will that change your pay? Yes, that will. That between that and um, South Carolina government's also proposing so a pretty big pay raise. So I should be looking at probably a ten thousand dollar bump in the fall nice very nice okay yeah. <laughs> all right here here um is what i heard you tell me and mm -hmm. um i i it, i'm saying that because i you get to choose whether i heard you properly or not because you're the one saying it but i heard that every time something comes up that you want to do you jump back and forth in and out of this I want a car, so I'm not going to do baby step two. I want to go get my PhD, so I'm going to go back into debt. And you're never going to break the cycle as long as you leave options on the table to violate the principles. Um, well, I hadn't had any trouble except for education. 
Like we've never had any other. Well, debt. No, no, it's, you just presented trouble to me education. again. You wanted to go buy a car while you're paying off the debt from the last time you fell off the wagon. Yeah. So this is two but, I mean, breaks I'm not in the talking pattern. About anything crazy? No, like, but I'm this is two breaks like in the pattern. Listen, if you want to go get a car, you go get a car. I would not, in your case. And it has nothing to do with the cars and it has nothing to do with the financial situation. You have to break this pattern. That's what I think. I think you have a pattern of jumping in and out, depending on what feels good right now and what you want to do. And I'm telling you, you got to plow through and have the transformation of the way you view debt and the way you view money and the way you, you know, you're not scared enough about debt yet. You're not freaked out and mad enough about debt yet to where you're fighting it like it's the enemy. It's just a casual annoyance. That's what all of your language said as you were discussing this. Yeah, it's absolutely right. She's got options, and we take a no-option stance. And so it starts to make sense when you make it an option, because then you look at an old van, you go, oh, we just put two grand in this. I don't want to put any more money in this. Uh, you know what? There's an option. I can get a loan, get a car, and that makes more sense. I'd rather put money into something that's newer that I don't have to. And it's just a cycle. If I'm going to quit eating donuts, I can't have them in the house. Right. It's not an option. Probably not a good idea to drive by that because, donut place well, either. I, yeah, yeah, sometimes that happens, but I keep driving. <laughs> you know, I can't turn in. Yes. If I turn in, it's over. Yeah. I can't, right. you know, if I have them in the house, a hundred percent chance I'm eating them. Oh, yeah. A hundred percent chance. Mm -hmm. Now, when I was breaking the cycle, what I would do is get up during COVID on the weekends at six o'clock in the morning. And I would go get donuts because nobody was out right. and take them to my grandkids and I would do that to make myself handle donuts and not eat one. Wow. And I did that to, to force myself through the process. But now I know that I'm weaker now <laughs> than, than when I was early and more enthusiastic in the process. Yeah. And I can't even have them in the house Yeah. because I will eat them. I'm impressed that Papa Dave didn't just at one point at a stoplight reach over and grab that one. Grab that That's chocolate impressive. covered hot light is on crispy cream yeah. and pop that. that's so my kryptonite that i know right i there. couldn't that, do it that right there so uh, you're my i'm just hero. telling you all of us have, my point is i'm no different caroline that's correct we all have this and so you have to have a no take no prisoners approach yeah. to change a behavior pattern so true to install a new principle in your character that you weren't yeah. doing before and you don't have a take no prisoners attitude about this and that's okay we can still be friends but you're, you're not going to execute these things well and, and with thoroughness until you do. So I would prescribe, no, don't buy a car, get mad, pay off the debt, because the debt's standing between you and getting a decent car because you're driving a couple pieces of crap around your house. And I'd be sick and tired of being sick and tired of driving crap, and this $20,000 is in my way, and i got to get rid of that so I can get an emergency fund and save up money for a little better car. And I'm going to go do that in a very short period of time, and I'm going to be really angry about it in yeah. a good way. Yeah. I like that, by the way. I don't want people to miss what Dave just said there. It's simple in what he said, but it's pretty profound in that you change the narrative to, I'm kind of, I got a PhD, I'm getting a nice job, I'm tired of driving around a piece of crap. So I'm going to save up, change my lifestyle, and buy a nice car cash. It's a completely different shift on the focus and the mindset, and it actually works. Yeah. Well, you got. You just got to say, I'm, I'm done with this. I'm not going to play games. I'm not going to play footsie with this. Yeah, you take the option off the table. You know, I don't go in banks. I don't right. go in the donut shop, and I don't go into a bank. Mm. The only thing banks are for is making deposits. That's all they're for. Tell you what, all this talk of donuts, I might stop by the shop on the way home tonight. Yeah, yeah. well, just you'll have to send Should me, I? Send Come on, a, Dave, talk me out. Send me a picture and tell me about <laughs> it. Yeah. I thought Dave was going to cuff me there, folks. He's not <laughs> helping me here. He's not helping me. <laughs> But no, it's really true. It, it, it's taking the option off the table. You know, I know you and I feel the same way about marriage, and I don't want anybody to feel guilt or anything. But, you know, committing to one person, you have to take the option off of the table. We're not going to quit. Yeah. Murder is an option. <laughs> but divorce is not. That yeah. went a little dark. I That's didn't see that coming. But yeah. One of my pastor friends says, you will never hear that he cheated on his wife. You will hear he died tragically in the home. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that's good oh man it was a tragedy tragic it was a tragedy tragic well there, there's an extreme thing because there there is a principle in yeah. the principle of transformation the principle mm -hmm. of 
behavior modification mm. that you have to, and it is smart to swing the pendulum way over into crazy to completely break the cycle in your brain. Right. And then when it comes back a little bit, it doesn't come all, never wanted to come all the way back because you're in crazy over on the other side. Mm -hmm. But when it comes back a little bit, you're, you're relaxed a little bit. My budget has a lot more margin in it than when I very first started doing a budget and I was yeah. a broke person. It was to the penny. Yeah. And now it's like, eh, what a, you know, sure. but I'm still got a budget, still got a plan, right? right. And, and I used to have groceries separated from restaurants because I couldn't. Right. I, I would, we'd go out to eat and use up the grocery money. And, and but so I had to have more, I had to swing it more detail, mm -hmm. more intentionality, more intensity. Yes. But now 30 years of doing this, I mean, we've got margin in the right. budget, number one, number two, you know, we're, it does matter. We but go. you and Sharon and all the people that have done this say something, you break your appetite for debt. Yeah. I, I mean, years ago, I, well, I, I break a, my appetite for living without a plan. I'll always have a plan. Exactly. But it's, it's a... I got rid of sweet tea years ago. I oh. can't even drink it anymore, oh, Dave. God. Oh, God. You know why? Because for about seven years, you're I hadn't had even, a You're not even a real Southerner. I know, folks. But now it's Give up disgusting. your Southern man card. I know. But you change your appetite, and that's huge. You, and, but you got to break I was it. okay with the donuts. The tea just got me. I know. Well, that's just my only uh, thing. I like other sweet things, but not the sweet tea anymore. It's too uh, much. Mm. Too much. Our, we really had sugar, and the tea was an excuse. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this is The Ramsey Show. stock market's weird. That's a statement that'll stand up almost any time. <laughs> 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 things are going bad. Things are going good. You can just say, the stock market's weird. Yeah, there you go. Hey, if you're freaking out, don't. Market dips don't mean you have to retire broke. It just means the market's going up and down. Roller coasters are no fun if they're flat. And no one gets hurt on a roller coaster except those that jump off in the middle of the ride. Listen, if you had invested $100 a month from age 25 to age 65 in the last 40 years, you'd have well over a million dollars in a good growth stock mutual fund. Now, I know some of you are going, that's a great plan, Dave, if I was 25. But uh, you can start where you are. That's the place to start. And a huge predictor of investing success is that you actually invest. Oh, that changes the numbers substantially. All this theoretical discussion is a bunch of crap. So get a pro in your corner. Go to RamseySolutions.com and click on SmartVestor. RamseySolutions.com slash SmartVestor. And you will find what we call a SmartVestor Pro, which is the group of pros, thousands of them across the nation, that we have vetted and that have the heart of a teacher and that help you with investments the same way we talk about here on the air. So when we talk about spreading across four types of mutual funds, growth, growth and income, aggressive growth and international, they're going to help you do that. Then we talk about buying mutual funds with a long track record, not something that's been open two years. They're going to help you do that. And they're going to show you and teach you and teach you and teach you and teach you to where you will say, I invested using a SmartVestor Pro, not I got a SmartVestor Pro to do my investing. You should never do that. You should always do your investing with the help of a teacher. That is you being a grown-up and taking responsibility for your future. So, RamseySolutions.com slash SmartVestor and get somebody in your corner to help you do your investing. Davina is with us in Houston, Texas. Hi, Davina. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. 
Oh, my God. I can't believe I'm talking to you. Hi, how are you? Better than we deserve. How can we help you? <laughs> um, so I'm a nurse. Um, I only have a 401k in my job. So I'm wondering if I should switch careers and be like a flight attendant or something or go work somewhere where I know they offer a pension if I stay for like X amount of years. I don't really know what to do. No, you probably should not do that because it sounds like the only reason you're considering a career change is because of the so-called pension that you think is more valuable than your 401k. Is that fair? Yeah. You like what you do now as a nurse. You enjoy it. Yes? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, you should not do it. Okay. You, you, have, so, you have just as much investing power yourself. And uh, the pension is not all it's cracked up to be. It sounds sure. like one of your patients was smoking dope and told you to do this. <laughs> no, well, one of my patients yeah. the other day, he was a flight attendant, and he just retired. Exactly. So I'm like, I'm like, or sorry, uh, like, what do I do with my life? <laughs> so all of a sudden, this guy talks you into this oh, pension thing. He's, and, he was sick, Davina. Remember that? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, was he on pain meds at any yeah. time in the conversation? Oh, uh, yeah. No, no. Listen, listen. Why shouldn't she do you that, Dave? You, listen, never take a career yeah. choice because of benefits. Okay. Money will always buy mm -hmm. benefits. Mm -hmm. Go yeah. make money. Put it in your 401k. Put it in your Roth IRA. Beef up your insurance if you need to because they don't have great benefits at your place. But I have never made financial decisions as far as my career goes based on benefits. And I've always okay. made enough money to provide myself any benefits that I would have needed, including <laughs> retirement, including the yeah. ability to retire with dignity and so forth. Choose a career based on something you're gifted at, that you love, that you can pour yourself into, and that you can make a really good living doing it. And the benefits will take care of themselves. Either you will take care of them or they will show up at the place you work, one of the two. But don't go get, I got whiplash. I'm a nurse, and then I'm a flight attendant. Or something. It was just like, <laughs> I've got to go where the pension yeah. is. No. And I, I Dave, I... The, That's old school. Pensions aren't all they're cracked up to they're be. They're not good at all. Why do people think they're so great? Well, they're almost all gone. To right. Start with. That's the other thing. You're just about out of the business. And many times so. poorly managed. I doubt if you were a fl brand new flight attendant in entry level today, if you're going to qualify for a pension. They right. probably have done away with them. Yeah. I, there may be one airline that still has that or something. I don't know. But that's just not a plan. Not a plan. Nope, 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 nope. Go make money. Yeah. <laughs> and that will cause you to have the money to buy your stuff. All right. Jacob is in Greenville, South Carolina. Hi, Jacob. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hey, Dave. How are you? Better than I deserve. What's up? Yes, sir. I was wondering how much should me and my wife deplete our savings to pay off our debt with a one-year-old son at home? Uh, down to one thousand dollars. Not okay. counting, not counting your retirement. Don't touch retirement. Yes, sir. We don't have any. I don't have. But she, she had the one four hundred one k. I don't have a retirement. Okay, I would I stop, I would stop adding to the four hundred one k temporarily, and I would get on a detailed written budget. And I'm going to attack the debts, smallest to largest, paying minimum payments on everything but the little one, and attack the little one with a vengeance. We call that the debt snowball. When the little one's gone, you take all the money you can squeeze out of your life and your budget, and you throw it out to that. You don't eat out. You don't go on vacation. You're not going to see the inside of a restaurant unless you're working there. So this, we're going crazy. We're completely focused and going to knock out this debt really, really fast. Because with only $1,000 in the account, I am really nervous. That is not a good long-term plan, but it's a great short-term plan to get the freaking mess cleaned up. How much debt have you got? I have uh, 19, about 19000 Okay, on what? Um, I have a uh, $9,000 uh, truck payment, um, $8,000. We got our windows replaced um, just recently. That's uh, for our windows replacement, um, 1200 in uh, medical, and 1400 in student loans. Gotcha. And what's your household income? Uh, bring home pay and between both of us is 62,000. All right. And how much is in savings? 21,000. Okay. All right. We can just about clear up all your debt. Yes, sir. That was my question. I just found you two weeks ago. Yeah. Um, and I'm, I just bought your book and okay. I'm all in. So is she, is she? that was my question. 
Yeah, yes, sir. She's coming around. Okay. <laughs> yes, right. sir. She's uh, she's nervous about hitting or okay. getting our savings hit. That so much. you don't let another salesman in your house that sells stuff like windows again, unless okay. you're unless you're going to pay cash for it. Okay. Because that's okay. what happened. Yes, that's what happened. Somebody came in and sold you windows. And and obviously, you're going to pay cash for any vehicles from this point forward. Your most powerful wealth Absolutely. building tool is your income. And what we did was we got rid of a truck payment, a window payment, and a couple of other little things that were just bothering you. And now we got your entire budget cleaned up. And now very, very quickly with no payments at all, we're going to take that $1,000 and build it back up to twenty. Yes. Okay. Okay. Jacob, have okay. you written down, or do you know off the top of your head, all of those payments right now from those debts you listed out? What does that add up to each month in your budget? Uh, we, I how much to, is the truck? I have to look at my, my How much budget. truck payment? Um, payment all payments two eighty. We've been paying three hundred dollars a month. Okay, three hundred on the truck. How much is the window payment? Um, minimum is uh, three fifty. We've been paying four hundred. That is interest free, but that doesn't okay, matter. Okay. And, and uh, <laughs> you said the other was a medical. Are you paying anything on it? Yes, sir. We're paying the the minimum amount at uh, three hundred and twenty one dollars a month. Wow. Okay, three hundred. Okay, and the fourteen hundred dollar. What's the payment on it? On that that student loan. Yes, sir. I'm putting a hundred dollars toward that. Okay. All right. So blah, blah, blah. look at this number, Jake. It's eleven hundred bucks a month. Yes, sir. Okay, so you got 1100 bucks a month plus whatever else you can squeeze out of your budget. And so in about 18 months or less, you're going to have your 20000 built back up. Probably about a year, you're going to have your 20000 built back up. And so you're only going to be at $1,000 for one month. Yep. Your and wife needs to know that. That's this month. Yep. Hang on. We're going to put you guys through Financial Peace University. We appreciate you joining this tribe. You're brand new to it. And we're going to pay for you to go through the class for free on us. Both of you go through the class together and go become millionaires. And then we'll brag on you. <laughs> this is The Ramsey Show. Scripture of the day, James 4, 17. So whoever knows the right thing to do and fails to do it, for him it is sin. Peter Marshall said, May we think of freedom not as the right to do as we please, but as the opportunity to do what is right. Ken Coleman, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host today. Vincent is with us in Houston, Texas. Hi, Vincent. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hey, Dave. How you doing, sir? Better than I deserve. What's up? Uh, yes. Uh, basically, my question is, uh, should I uh, move and commute for basically a promotion, which uh, turns out to be $80,000, $80, approximately $40 an hour, or stay with my current $18 an hour and make approximately 40000 So it kind of doubles my income. But the thing is, if I take the promotion, obviously I will have to move, and the cost of living, uh, uh, it will be almost triple what I'm paying now in my mortgage. Uh, my mortgage, I pay approximately $800 a month, of course, plus utilities, which is not much. Um, in the new place, uh, it will be uh, around maybe twenty two to twenty five hundred dollars a month plus utilities. where are you talking about moving to Vincent? Um uh Dallas, Texas. Where? Dallas. Dallas. Okay, so the cost of living in Dallas is not triple the cost of living in Houston. Your your housing situation may go up, but the cost of living is very similar in the two cities. All the other costs yeah, of living issues. So your current residence you own it, right? Yeah, so I mean, I'm my like yes, like yeah. I so said, what is mortgage, what is your mortgage? What is your mortgage balance on your current residence? Uh, a little under sixty thousand. 
Okay. And what is it worth? Um, it should be around two sixty. Okay. So you have a two hundred thousand dollar equity that you would take to Dallas to buy something with, and that doesn't necessarily put you in a twenty four hundred dollar payment. That's, um, that's not yeah, accurate. I, yeah, well, I, mean, I was just thinking because uh, this is kind of like, um, you know, moving maybe for a few years. Because, I mean, I have my parents and everybody here, you know, my wife, family. And, you know, so I'm, I'm, I've been commuting and so, I've been so, paying. So what is the new job? Uh, the new job, I'm a uh, aviation maintenance technician. Okay, and there's no uh, aviation maintenance years. technicians that make eighty grand in Houston. Of course, there is. Uh, there, well, they are, but I mean, I I'm already I've been with the company for a few years, and I just got the promotion. You know, um, you got a promotion so, that moved you to Dallas. Yeah, that, that's kind of what I'm. I keep thinking, like, man, doesn't make sense, you know. To, you know, the, the way I'm looking at it is. If I move, it's literally taking me. Yeah, let me tell you what I keep hearing, work. okay? You keep giving me 73 reasons why you don't want to move to Dallas. You don't want to move to Dallas. I, I don't. Oh, okay. And All are right, you I commuting? Could, you know, yeah, he's commuting to Dallas. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, you can't keep it up. So I think you look for an airline technician's job making 80 But I don't know why you need to make $18 an hour to stay in Houston. You don't. If you're doing airline technicians work in Dallas for 80 grand, there's airline technicians work for somewhere around 80 grand to do in Houston, I promise you. There's as much aircraft in Houston as there is in Dallas. You'd have to change companies, but whoop de doop de this company ain't working for you. Yeah. So you get to decide yeah. which pain you want. Mm -hmm. Do you want the pain of changing companies or changing cities? No, I, I really don't want to leave my parents. I mean, they're, they're getting okay. up on age. Change, and, you, know, you just decide just, what pain you want. Yeah. So it's time for you yeah. to say, I'm going to straighten my backbone and throw my shoulders back and change companies. Or I'm going to walk in and talk to my boss about making mm -hmm. 80 grand in Houston because my days of talking about moving to Dallas are over because I'm not moving to Dallas. Yeah. Vincent, how long have you been with this current company? Um, is I mean, uh, Straight around up. three years. Three but years with the new with the new with the new position. It's been a little like like okay. a year. Here's the deal. So, it's you know. it's a scary thing for people to move, and you've got Companies. to identify what you're scared of. Okay, specifically, <laughs> and I'm telling you, once you identify what those are, there's there's no evidence of that. And Dave's exactly right. You have skill. Uh, where you bring more to the table than just even be able to work on air, air I mean, uh, 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 airplane engines. So you've got to open up your world to what your skill and experience would allow you to do to make the kind of money you want to make so that you stay in Houston. You, you know 16 people yeah. <laughs> that work doing what you're doing at other companies. And when you pick up the phone and call them, you're going to have a job in a week. Mm. you're just a guy that doesn't want to feel like you were disloyal to the other company and you're not you. And if you want to give them the opportunity to hire you in Houston for 80 grand, that'd be okay too. Just say, guys, I can't do the commute and I'm not willing to move to Dallas. And so, um, you know, let's, let's, is there anything you can open up for me here that makes it close to that where I can do this job in Houston? And if not, then start making some calls to your buddies in the business. You've got guys right across the tarmac, and you know exactly who they are. Their faces are popping into your mind as I'm speaking. Mm -hmm. And you know you're going to call that guy, and you're going to call that guy, and you're going to call that guy, and that gal, and the lady that works the front desk at the FBO. And in, you know, in three days, dude, you're going to have a job. So, Because aircraft is that way right now. It's, it's hot and uh, white hot. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> It'd be like being in technology or something. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're in a, you are in the driver's seat. So uh, I appreciate your humility, but uh, I want you to take on some more confidence and boldness on how you approach this gently and kindly with your existing company. But Vincent, you don't want to move to Dallas. You told us that 73 different ways. So no, you should not move to Dallas. You should get a new job 
in Houston making better money. Yeah, I agree. Because what will happen is, is you'll begin to resent this very opportunity because your heart's in Houston and your body's in Dallas. And that's never going to work for anybody. It's not even fair, by the way, to your current employer because you're half there, if that, over time. Because your heart's in Houston, and it's where he wants to be with his family. So it's, it's a no-brainer. But a lot of people, Dave, are very scared of they just got a promotion, and it feels counterintuitive. It feels almost stupid, if I could use a, a, a kind of a bold word, to go, well, I just got a promotion, and now I'm going to leave and go somewhere else. So that's because you're too worried about what everyone else is going to say. Uh, but but in this situation, you know what's important to you, and you've got to make work decisions that align with your values. Yeah, your family, you know. You're, you're a guy that lives in Houston. That's what you told us. Mm-hmm. You very, very clearly. And so um, so this, is, this, this promotion for you was not a blessing. Mm-mm. Other than it made you realize you're more valuable than $18. That's right. Uh, so it did help you with that part. But it, it wasn't a blessing because it, all it did was put you in a bind and made you feel like I'm being pulled by, oh, I should be smart and take the money, but I don't want to live in Dallas. And so that's the conversation you and I had here for a few moments and you're good you're a good man you're by the t- way i want to add one other practical thing dave because I've, I've counseled people on, on my show on this one he's also wondering what does it look like i just took this job and three months later i'm looking for a new job nobody wants to look like a flake and that's a legitimate concern okay because people look at your resume but here's the narrative You've got to sit and tell these new potential employers, you know what, I took this job because it was a great bump and I've been working hard for this, but here's the deal. My parents are older and I realize that I need to be with them right now. People understand that. That's not a flake. You're not going to look flaky and flighty and look like a job hopper. You're going to look like a guy who cares deeply about his parents and you know that for this season I need to stay close to home. And and that's part of that. his concern. There it is. That'll do it. Good work, guys. Well done. Well done. That puts this hour of the Ramsey Show in the books. Ken Coleman, good hour. Thank you, sir. Well done. We'll be back with you before you know it. In the meantime, remember, there's ultimately only one way to financial peace, and that's to walk daily with the Prince of Peace, Christ Jesus. Hey, it's Ken. If you like what you heard in this episode and want to know more about getting started on the Ramsey baby steps, go to RamseySolutions.com and click on the Get Started button. We'll help you figure out the best next step for you based on your specific situation. Again, that's RamseySolutions.com and click Get Started.